You're listening to the Ballet Piano Podcast, lifting the lid on dance accompaniment. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Ballet Piano Podcast. The three pianists and the ballet master are back in our natural habitat, which is around our dining table, not on the sofa. And we'd like to welcome you back to this episode. My name is Chris Hobson, and with me is Akiko Hobson. Hello. Matt Gregory. Hello, listeners. And David Yao. Hi, everybody. So this episode, we've spoken a lot about how we love the job, why we love the job, and what we love about it. But with everything in life, it doesn't always go to plan, does it? Sometimes, you know, you can be thrown a curveball. I think we've all had them, haven't we, Matt? We've all been there. It can just be <laughs> like literally you're lobbed under a bus or you just go, I'm expecting something. Oh, yes. <laughs> on a semi-regular basis you can sometimes. prepare so much only so much you can, but and then there's a what like i don't know at least 50 percent of the job you just don't know what's going to yeah. happen ever really but luckily listeners as you're going to hear in this episode it goes both ways it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a two-way episode this one <laughs> because it happens to ballet teachers ballet pastors and dancers as well as musicians akiko yes kick us off go for it <laughs> well my horror story yeah go on what's a horror story for what? you or just like a scarring memory or a nightmare from a ballet studio i have quite a few but the one that <laughs> is that because you've been doing this scarred. game for so long <laughs> yeah i'm traumatized i'm paying my therapist mortgage <laughs> <laughs> you know seriously maybe all the ballet institutions should pay us for the therapy so we have been uh, being uh, like you know fresh mind number one class. soundboard aren't we for ballet teachers and ballet dancers yeah because our mental state is very important mm. for the this class, is why we do the podcast because we can't afford therapy <laughs> <laughs> so we talk this is the therapy yeah right go on what was okay. it well i have quite a few but the one that i am not traumatized but it was just very very difficult was that one of the teacher uh, he was setting a uh, grand allegro and he came to me and said, well, Akiko, I want this count for, for count number one and this speed for two, this speed of three. And he started to say, go, it's one and a two and a three and a four and a, and each count had a different speed. So I just kind of said to him that that's quite impossible. Uh, and he said, don't worry, like, I conduct you. And he literally... <laughs> <laughs> Pianists don't want to work with a conductor anyway. Let alone yeah. A trained conductor, let alone a balletic conductor. Yeah, like, it's not the problem about him conducting him, not conducting him. I just kind of said, oh, okay. And he started to conduct. And, uh, uh, yeah, I just... I don't know if I made it work, but he didn't complain after. And... I didn't say a word, so it was just kind of forgotten now, I think. What did you play? <laughs> Improvised. Have either of you pianists just completely stopped in the middle of an exercise because something just goes horribly wrong and you can't get it back? <laughs> David's looking up and <laughs> laughing at me. Because I actually personally don't think I ever have, I don't think I've ever stopped in the middle of exercise or anything. No, I, I just kept playing. Good for I, you. The only time I stopped playing was somebody who got majorly injured during the exercise and couldn't oh, okay. stand up. Oh. And then, oh yeah, I think that's I think I've stopped on yeah, that. Occasion. That's worth what you someone is into themselves, I've stopped. Yeah. Even that, I think I will keep playing for like two bars mm. to and see if people see, keep going yeah. and carry on. Yeah, yeah. What, jeté yeah. over the person or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh. I once stopped. The, look at David's little happy face there. He knows exactly what story I'm referring to. I was working with a particularly unmusical teacher. Let's call them. <laughs> and are they non-binary i i don't know how they identify but i'm just going to stay anonymous with this one okay and nothing was musical and they didn't care they didn't give a absolute damn didn't give a rat's backside and wouldn't also tell you so you'd be you know seven and a half phrases into something and then they just look at you do the left to right as in stop do the guillotine movement and that was it oh wow and then in some unset assessments once where it's, you know, everything was unseen. I didn't know what I was going to play like an open class. Mm. And then after the first exercise, I added like two bars into square it off. And he looked at me, I'm oh, sorry, they looked at me 
in horror. <laughs> I said, like, yes, okay, that's 50% of the ballet world. It was a man. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he looked at me in horror. And I was like, well, do you know what? If you're going to make me feel like crap at the... S- and you're in, you're in your first exercise, you can have it. So I watched the plie and I watched when it was going to stop and I just didn't finish the phrase. So I stopped at like, I think it was like my 57th bar and I just stopped. So I it didn't was on square on purpose? It was just how it was choreographed. And because you squared it, that wasn't what he wanted. This wasn't what he wanted. He wanted whatever I did to fit with. Oh, I see. His. I think oh, that right. was what. I think that was what he wanted. But oh, I see. I, no, I don't. I was like, well, do you know what? I'm, I can't make this work. Yeah. Musically like that anymore, especially without even you know a vague indication. Just so you know, oh, it's seven, six lots of eight, and then just just three or four counts on the end. Mm. At least you know you had to understand it. And I just, I just, do you know what? I've, I'm getting too old for this. But mm. when I stopped playing, it was you know. Probably that on the, I don't know, the D minor or something like that mm. of, a, of an E flat major piece. And mm. I just stopped and took my hands away from the keyboard and I looked to my left and David's face was, <laughs> it, you know, like the screen painting. Oh, yeah. That's what the face yes. was. It yes. was like, what is going on? I've never done it, and I've never done it since. Were well, you entertained, David? Very. I was, I was shocked. <laughs> you were shocked. Because was, Chris never stops. <laughs> Suddenly there was just nothing. I was like, <laughs> but go on, as we as we address it start david it's a two-way thing this isn't it because it, it can is. go two ways and this is I you have, must have the odd horror story from your to my 55 shame, years in <laughs> <the dance studio. laughs> it feels like that when i tell you i have two stories and um, um, both of them are to do with what stress does to you but um one is what's what happens when a, when a pianist is stressed and what happens when a teacher is stressed the first one, I mean, they're both from vocational schools. Um, the first one was when a pianist was was um, auditioning for a school, um, and I just went on as normal. Um, and when you go into an audition like this, you don't really know very much about the pianist. Yeah. So you don't know about their experience beforehand mm. or, you know, what state they're in when they arrive, all of those kind of things. So you just go on as you would normally do. Mm. And as the class went on, I realized they were they were being very challenged by what was happening. And clearly they didn't have enough, um, a, a lot of experience beforehand. You could, I could tell. And, and eventually it, it just got so to a point where they were, they were in tears. And so I realized oh then I had to just like, just ease back and really, really have patience and explain. And we got through it. We got yeah. through it. Mm. But when you're in that situation, it, it's very stressful because you, you've got one hat on thinking I've got to, I've got to teach the, the class and I have a responsibility to the students. Yes. And there's another one where I have to take care of this person because they really, they're really out of their depth and I can tell, but you want them to have as, as even amongst this, you, you think I've got to turn this experience around so that it's, it's going to turn out okay for them yeah. in the end. And it did, it did. Um, but at the time it was like really, really stressful. And, and just having the patience and that we've always said this before, haven't we, about communication, keeping the, the level of communication going yeah. really helped mm. the situation. But it was really hard um, all around. That sounds it was it was. Yeah, you must have had to draw on all of your professionalism, <laughs> psychology, everything. <laughs> I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, that was good for me as well. And and the other the other time was I. I was under a lot of stress, was yeah. preparing for something, um, a competition, um, and a lot of rehearsals were thrown at me and, and I was unprepared for it. And I was working with one of my favorite um, uh, pianists at the time, who still is one of my favorite mm-hmm. pianists, and I adore when they play. Um, but I was so stressed and this person hadn't played for, clearly hadn't played for this particular solo or something or version of that solo, even though they were very experienced. Mm. And, um, so they were, they didn't know what, uh, where the cuts were or anything like this. Mm. And I was so stressed because I was short for time and I had a lot of people to rehearse and I just, it just came out. I just said something inappropriate and just, oh, that's not helping. And quite rightly, they just got up and went and I didn't blame them. And it was my fault. I've never seen, I've worked with you for a decade. I've never seen that. I've never seen. Because I learned from that. Yeah. Wow. I learned from that. That was my fault. And I, I, Later on, I, I, I apologize profusely mm-hmm. um, because it was all my fault. But, mm. uh, but that's what I'm just saying. It's not just stress from one end. It can happen all yeah. over the place. And you just have to try. And the thing was, I should have just taken a breath and just started from zero and said, okay, we're both in the dark about this. Let's just work out how we do it. Uh, but I didn't because I was stressed. Yeah. 
And, you know, you, your options are reduced when you're stressed. Mm. And so it, it just came out. But I did learn that yeah. huge lesson. And I've never done that before since then. Mm. You know, I've always like just stopped and taken a breath. And that mm. just taking the breath really helps. Yeah. You. So both pianists and, and teachers, mm. just take a breath because it, it just reassert, it just re, re, re recalibrates everything yeah mm. And, mm. and just to say sorry I'm, I'm i'm floundering here is is okay yeah it's okay to admit yeah. that you're struggling <clears throat> in a situation yes, as well it mm. is. and i've heard horror stories of uh, at the companies where there's been big arguments in rehearsals whereas if both parties just stepped away for 10 seconds or even a minute and then came back to the rehearsal it probably needn't get that heated Absolutely. you know but then you know that's art isn't it and everyone's, yeah. everyone's making a ballet and everyone's got their passion involved and yeah. their emotion is in it yeah you know from all sides so but we just keep saying how important it is to keep communicating even yeah, in the definitely. most stressful moments mm. yeah. yeah and i think and also remember that like as with that situation david nothing is personal it's not nothing's meant no, on a personal level and, no. you, and you can <clears throat> admit afterwards you know i'm really sorry i handled that situation in completely yes. the wrong way mm. Mm. You're listening to the Ballet Piano Podcast, lifting the lid on dance accompaniment. Oh my God. Come on, Matt. So this was, me- this was many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> At a company in London, I was booked to play for a ballet class and I turned up and it was a contemporary class. <gasps> Oh, I don't play contemporary. I'm imposter. I feel like a fraud. You do solos and repertoire now, but you don't do contemporary. Well, apparently. <laughs> I just, I just think wonder you now. Be good at it. But now, if I'd have been thrown into that situation yeah. now, I'd be so much. I've more in my wheelhouse to get yeah. through it. I have no more tunes. I know more rhythms. I just, you know, the longer yeah. you do it, the more you have in your bag. Yeah. And I think if, I, if that ever happened now, I'd be absolutely fine. Yeah. But this was a good few years ago. And, you know, a company class on stage. Oh, it's it's not ballet today. It's contemporary. I don't know why you've been booked. <gasps> do you still want to do play it? And I was like, oh. And then the teacher, who was one of the company dancers, who just happened to be taking the class, he said, oh, Matt, you'll be absolutely fine. You know, you've played for us a long time. We'll just jam it. We'll just vibe it. This, that, and the other. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, we know how different ballet is for, from contemporary. Yeah. yeah. And my heart is going now. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> because they obviously don't start at the bar they were just in the center for an hour you yeah. know all the foot exercises the over curves yeah all those things did you do it whole thing yeah but i was felt completely inadequate because it's all rhythm and groove isn't yeah. it for contemporary mm. a lot more than just playing tunes and lovely bright waltzes it's Musical very different doesn't sit that well in contemporary classes does no. it in most no sadly if, if i ever have to play in a contemporary way i'll try and weave a tune in to some sort of rhythm right just so there's something over the top but it is it's a lot of rhythm a lot of texture lots of different colors mm. in the music and i just think oh god i think i've just bead sweated from the start <laughs> to, the, <laughs> to the end <laughs> oh and i think the, the thing is as well, I don't think the dancers would really know mm. if you sort of have, you know, fake confidence and conviction, you know, make them believe that what you're doing is, you know, 10 out of 10, it's pure gold. Yeah. Then they'll buy it for an hour, won't they? Mm. It's about how you have the confidence to sell what you're going to do. Style it out. Yeah. And so I think I just put my poker face on. I was like, yeah, I've got this. <laughs> Even though inside I was like, oh. <laughs> so I was probably playing too quick because I was just so nervous. Oh, but we all do that, don't we? Oh, it's just a natural, it's a natural transition, I think. Everybody will start playing quicker when they're nervous. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. 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 No matter what level you are. Yeah. yeah. Like some of the kids that you teach, Kiko, they speed up when they see semi-quavers because they get nervous. Yeah yeah oh, right. because yeah. it's fast they know it's so fast yeah. and then they're so nervous mm. and some teachers not you david but some teachers don't let you off the reins they're constantly on you yeah which in itself means you're sort of being micromanaged mm. and that can just make you feel nervous mm. yeah and you know if you know you're sort of being conducted a little bit or you know clicked along then that can just make you feel a bit ner more nervous <sighs> and then you, I... you then you'll just be a bit agitated and you'll generally be a bit quicker or i just having uh, I, I hate like having people around the piano. Mm. Mm. 
Even like you know, like some dancers, they don't they don't care what they play or what they do, but、mm. they just a bit too close, and、yeah. that makes me feel a little bit nervous already. Yeah, I know what somehow, you mean. Somehow, I don't know. Bit claustrophobic. So, yeah, the piano is like, yeah. like your personal space, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, like don't. Don't come too close to me. I、yeah. don't like it. Guess away. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back the two meter rule. <laughs> I recently had actually experience of I was playing in a performance and the piano was located in a place that it's already very difficult to see the stage, and the piano wasn't、oh. the very best piano to to handle with, which I already was aware. But on top of that. People were in and out, standing next to the piano,、oh. and even was there was a filming going on, and this like a proper camera、mm. was literally right next to my piano stool. So if I had to play a little bit higher note, I、mm. would have knocked that that camera that sort of distance. It was very close,、oh. and. Oh, I just my heart was like I just had to like David said like breathe、mm. and then just play. As normally I do. Yeah, it's just the fact that having these twenty odd people just too close to me、mm. just made me feel like not me.、Mm. Yeah, it was bravo not good. you for getting through that. I've got something that tags on to that because I played、that. for a class at Royal Festival Hall、mm. when the company was there,、mm. and they said, "Oh, you've got to play the piano in the pit." Oh. For class, you can't see from. The I、class. can't see. No,、them. I could just about <laughs> see that the teacher, if they stood on the edge、Whoa. of the stage,、Whoa. couldn't see any dancers, no more than a few feet onto the stage. So I had to rely on the teacher being stood at the front of the stage to set it, and of course couldn't see any dancers. That's tough. So you're relying. I think I had a little audio monitor or something. I didn't have any visual.、Mm. Oh、so、goodness. you're doing it blind. Yeah. Yeah.、Um, But that's when the teacher's got to help you that a little bit more.、Mm. You know the teacher、what? can conduct it.、Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm happy for you to conduct it. We're all laughing and joking. I played for Northern Ballet well before COVID, and it came down with a mid-scale production. It went to Richmond, and I, I've not played for the company for about five years. And I got there, and there's still some the odd person that I knew there. And then Yoko, is this your horror story? It's just a story,、oh, really.、Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not. I've been told I'm crap loads of times, <laughs> but. No, I got there, and then there was no piano on the side side of the stage. Like to churn the stage, I was like, "Where is it?" It's like, "Oh, it's in the pit," but it was under the pit. Whoa! Oh, no. oh. and there was no audio monitoring. Oh, so, so how I, did you do it? Oh my lord! I had to listen to Yoko set the exercise <laughs> above me, and then she would like lean over the stage and go, "It's finishing soon." <laughs> <laughs> Oh、and I was thinking,、God. so I was sort of like I was、oh. running to the front of the pit and standing on the leader's chair, so I could vaguely see what she was setting. Then running、oh. back,、oh、it's like you'll remember this one. They just do their stool on this one. <laughs> 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 Yoko, that was an awful impression. I'm so sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was、oh. dreadful. I didn't have a clue what was going on.、So、that、I'm、sounds just... like a horror story. Yeah. That's not just a story. I know that's true. That is, yeah, that was a bit of a horror story. Yeah, but if you knew some you people like Yoko, <laughs> I knew the thing was, is, I knew the teacher. And if you know what、yeah. she's going to say, least, you know, I hadn't played、helps. for many years. At least I,、yeah. you know, that when you've played for certain people for so long,、yeah. you know what they're going to do, don't、yeah. you? So at least it was in there. It was in the、mm. back of the memory. Yeah,、mm. almost like in the muscle memory. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I、oh. have a, a sorry. Li- no, no, don't. I have a little bit of a not piano playing horror story. <laughs> But I don't know if it's not appropriate. Chris can cut it. I、Talk、think、up. I know what story it is. So tell、um, it because it's very funny. I was very young. I was still like just a few years into playing for ballet, and I had to play for one of the evening performance. And they had a two two set like first half and the interval and second half. And the first half was done by piano, which I had to play whole thing because. No, the pianist wanted to stay that long, and I was just really pushed into. And you、play. were the newbie. And you,、yes. I was a newbie, so I had to play whole thing. <laughs> so I was, you know, the rehearsal was fine and everything. I so I knew what I was doing, and it was everything was fine. But as the rehearsal goes by towards the performance, oh, we don't have anybody to press the bottom of the CD for second half. <laughs> And I was somehow pushed in to press the bottom of the CD after I played the whole first half、oh、piano.、Mm. I had to go to this little cubby hole where the CD was, and I'm、mm. not a sound technician. Like、mm. all I can do is press play and the pause.、Yeah. That's all I could do. I don't know what's <laughs> the input or output to change everything. 
And then I was somehow, I just couldn't say no for this. But I tell you all the ballet business, just say no, because you are not the sound technician. <laughs> yeah. You're not you a sound pianist. tech, it's not you, your job. It's not your job to play the uh, CD. Anyway, so I played the first half. And then <laughs> before the show starts, I did, when I did go to the CD player to make sure that the sound was coming out. <laughs> uh, and then I went to play and the interval happened. And then I went to the CD, but didn't check if a sound was coming out. But I presume that it, I checked in the before the mm, show starts, so mm, it should be mm. okay. And I just need to press start. And I press start, no, nothing comes out. Oh. And then I'm panicking because I can see on the screen that the, the counting is going oh, up. So yeah. it's playing, but the sound is not coming out. Oh. Um, and then like people like started to like token things and then director fuming came to me shouted at me what's going on <laughs> i have no idea because my job is just press play <laughs> like somebody help me turned out somebody thought it that i can't remember that somebody put a, a, a their phone or something to play it on an interval and uh, change the output uh, of oh, the sound, the, uh, which i didn't know <clears throat> but I didn't know. Anyway, that sorted and the music came out finally. So the show started. But whole second half, I was so nervous. Yeah. And every time I, I remember, every time I play, like pause or play, my fingers are shaking. Yeah. Oh. oh, no. And then it, it was like an extract from Slough Swan Lake. So each variation, I pause and I play, I pause and play. And then everything finished and the cutting call and everything like this. So all the everything, finale, cutting call, everything. So I was like, oh, it's finished. And I thought I pressed um, pause or, or stop or something. But because <laughs> my finger was shaking, I pressed it twice because my finger was shaking. Oh, no. <laughs> And then everybody's doing this cutty and uh, everybody's <laughs> applauding. And next thing everybody here is like, da, 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 I was like panicking, trying to stop it. Fade out, fade out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I was like, I would never do it again. Yeah. And I'm telling oh. all the pianists just, See, pressing the button of the CD is not your job mm. and don't do it. Yeah, It's very stressful. Can you it tell is. your horror story about Engines of the Swans? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it, it never gets old and it always gets funnier. That is a classic oh, right. horror okay, story. Okay, Matt, this will be like when, when I'm trying to send you a voice note. Like, I'll tell it and let's see how often, often sorry, it. this one interrupts oh. it. Right? I'm, I'm crying so, already. Right, I've got, I'm going to tell two. Because okay. we could probably do another horror stories episode at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been thinking while Akika was talking, I've got six lined up. But oh, it's coming to oh, the end. Wow. No, no. Um, so two. So the first one, Swan Lake. It was at a school in the Western Hemisphere. We, lots of people know this story. <laughs> at a summer school performance on a Friday afternoon. And I was so I think I was one of the first generation who really, really embraced using the app Four Score on the iPad when it came out in 2010. And I bought a Bluetooth page turner to have so I, I would pedal with my right foot and i would you know tap left on the pedal or tap right to <laughs> so already laughing so don't steal it's my like driving a car it really is so yeah off we go entrance of the swans and as we all know beautiful <laughs> the problem is it is so so repetitive isn't it yeah, yeah. so if yeah. you you know if you look away from the score or you lose your place in this score mm. it can be tricky to get back to where you were yeah. well, it's so, impossible yeah yeah so i tap forward on my little bluetooth pedal nothing happens <laughs> so i tap forward again oh. and nothing happens so i carry on playing and then it turns forward two pages <laughs> So I'm like, oh no. So I tap back once or possibly twice, I don't know, whilst still trying to play as all these swans are walking out of a cubby hole in the corner. And the next thing, the pages are literally going left, right, left, right, 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 left, 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 right, left, right, 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 left, 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 right, right. Oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. By this point, I completely lost where I was. Oh my God, it was so funny. And Akiko and I weren't together at this point, but what I helpfully had behind me was Akiko sniggering. <laughs> it was so funny. 
<laughs> and the lovely Larissa. Was it funnier because you were on a break? I was sitting inside because it was like we were all done editing, yeah, playing. So yeah. it wasn't my time to play. Yeah. So. <laughs> Like, it was horrendous. Luckily, I had the gorgeous Larissa Bamba stood oh, next to me. And she, like, and she was like wafting her arms up and down going, the wafts, the wafts. So she was like, you need to wait until my iPad flipping was, catches up. She was going on. <laughs> that was, that was very stressful. Oh, it was a funniest <laughs> moment. It I would was, have been funny if you were there. Priceless. You made it stressful. <laughs> It was priceless. It was so funny. I never seen Chris sweating that much. <laughs> and we've been to Dubai together. And I <laughs> a lot to Dubai. No, I think the other top horror story that I've got, and I remember this semi recently. It was on tour with Northern Ballet, and we were on with Nutcracker. So this was Christmas, sort of autumn, winter, two thousand and eight. I think it was. Yeah, two thousand and eight. And we were at Hull New Theatre. Mm. Gorgeous little theatre. It was ideal for us because we could commute there from Manchester along the M62 highway, motorway. Perfect. And it was fireworks night. And it's not the most soundproof oh. of venues, whole new theatre. <laughs> and it's got a gorgeous pub next door, which is still there called the Old English Gentleman, which is the band's pub. So all the band that go in there for a drink before it. And next to that, it's the fire station. So <laughs> 5th of November, fireworks night in Hull, the northeast of England, top of Yorkshire. Most of the way through the first act, we just hear fire engine sirens going off <laughs> randomly <laughs> oh and my. fireworks, which was, you know, it's to be expected. Interval, all good. Come back for the second act. And as the strings start with the pizzicato for the sugar plum, pium, 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 we start sugar plum and we get about eight bars into it. And then there is a minuscule power cut oh my god which went it just went off on that was all <gasps> it was right but it was enough to switch off the electric and then the lights to come back on so everything just went oh. black so black light black light that was all it was whoa but things reset presumably <laughs> yes <laughs> northern technology ballet, resets northern ballet didn't have a celeste we had as you'll have heard in gavin's episode from a few weeks ago mm. we had a clavin over a oh. yamaha clavin over which took about 10 seconds to reset. Oh. <laughs> and then it resets to the grand piano sound effect. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's so funny. But not only that, I then had to wait to just quickly get back to Celeste, which I managed to do. Yeah. And as the Celeste had stopped, because of course everybody else could continue playing. Nobody yeah. else had an electronic instrument. Yeah. I just heard this little girl in the front go, Mommy, what's happened to the music? <laughs> <laughs> I ruined some young ballerina's <laughs> dream. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, that was, and then the conductor afterwards said to me, he's like, if anything like this happens, you know, you just carry on playing. I was, like, I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> carry on playing. <laughs> wow. Oh dear. Oh, but, yeah, like, that was quite strange. I was like, well, there was nothing I could do about it. It was mm. just, it was just a situation that I found myself in, mm. which was, it was a bit stressful. <laughs> But I get, it's at least with that, a bit like you and Kiko, there was nothing that I could do about it. I just had to sort of just, just wait. And... But you still feel bad, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. Anyway, listeners, I forgot to do the call to actions for a while, so I'm going to do one now. Don't forget to visit the website if you want to watch the videos of us, which is balletpianopodcast.com. And we are available, as always, on Facebook and Instagram, which is at Ballet Piano Podcast. And finally... If you want us to chat about something, you want to ask us a question, you want to get in contact with any members of the team, please do feel free to email us, which is ballypianopodcast at gmail.com. So that's enough horror stories for now. We're, gonna, <laughs> we're all going to go and cry in a corner and spend thousands <laughs> of pounds on therapy. So until the next time, it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye, everybody.